Hey there, it's Dr. Jim. Thanks for watching this video. I have an interesting topic for you today, seizures and epilepsy. Can CBD help? And it's based on my book, my, my newest book, Living Longer and Stronger with CBD, where I take a look at hundreds of studies examining the effects of CBD for physical, mental, emotional, neurological disorders, and more. So according to the CDC, just a couple years ago, around 1.2% of the entire U.S. population had epilepsy. And of those, 3.4 million were adults and almost a half a million were children. It's estimated that one in every 26 people in the United States will eventually develop epilepsy sometime in their lives. Although there are medications available to treat the disorder, many come with potentially negative side effects. What I'm excited about, what you should be excited about as well as researchers have been looking into CBD and are rigorously looking into CBD now as a potential and viable treatment for seizures and epilepsy. I'm glad about that. So here's an overview. Let's take a look at seizures first, and then we'll take a look at epilepsy. They're two different things. So seizures are not their own disorder. They're an underlying symptom of other brain disorders or brain traumas. So seizures take place when there are abnormal electrical charges, uh, discharges or changes in the brain. Brain cells prevent or stimulate other brain cells from sending messages, which causes an imbalance, leading to further chemical changes in the brain and electrical surges, which ultimately result in seizures. So there's a chain reaction type of thing happening here. Some seizures are visible, they're noticeable, um, others are silent and people don't even know that they're having them. No one else around them knows that they're having them either. So that's, the, that's seizure. That's what a seizure is. Now let's look at epilepsy. Epilepsy, on the other hand, is a neurological disorder that affects the, the um, nervous system. It's diagnosed after a person has at least two seizures or after one seizure, but the physician believes that there's a very strong risk, very high risk, that the person is going to have another seizure or more seizures down the road. Epileptic seizures may have a genetic component, which means they, they might run in families, or they can be associated with some type of brain injury or a trauma. And when they are, they're referred to as adult onset seizure disorder. Okay. Let me grab a glass of water here. I've been talking all day. I promise it's water. Let's look at medications. Symptoms of seizures and epilepsy, according to the experts, can mostly be controlled through the use of meds. They're called um, anti-epileptic drugs, anti-seizure drugs, or anti-convulsant um, medications. They go by a few names. There are a number of medications available depending upon the person's type of seizures, the individual's age, and other health considerations. These types of medications do come with mild side effects like the following. Fatigue, lightheadedness, weight gain, compromised bone integrity, clumsiness, rashes, trouble with walking, talking, remembering, and thinking. More serious side effects include the following, though. Depression and inflamed liver and serious skin conditions. Besides meds, there are some lifestyle modifications that people can make to better manage their symptoms and their overall disorder. Non-medication-based treatments include dietary changes, such as adding the ketogenic medium-chain triglyceride diet, also called the MCT diet, low glycemic index treatment, LGIT, and consuming more carbohydrates low on the glycemic scale. These dietary changes are meant to reduce risk for seizure activity and help manage symptoms of epilepsy. Other lifestyle changes that might be helpful include the following quality, and restful sleep. 
regular exercise, staying well hydrated, wearing a medical alert bracelet, finding a great doctor, letting friends and family know about the condition so they, they will know what to do. They'll be better prepared. Finding a good support group, okay? Now, nerve stimulation, you know, the two last resort types of treatments, you know, you go, you try the meds, you do all the lifestyle changes possible. In severe cases, an individual might try either nerve stimulation or surgery. So let's talk about nerve stimulation. A last resort might include either one of these. There are two different types of nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve stimulation method involves insertion of a small vagus nerve stimulator under the skin of the chest area, which sends bursts of electricity through the nerve to the brain, helping to control seizure activity. Responsive neurostimulation is the other one. This involves the use of a neurostimulator which is inserted into the scalp area. It searches for potential seizure activity in the brain and then sends impulses to stop them. They're like smart devices in the body to control or stop seizures. Surgery. Two procedures for epilepsy include resective surgery and disconnective surgery. Resective surgery involves removing the part of the brain causing seizures. That's a radical thing to do. Disconnective surgery is a procedure in which the surgeon cuts nerve pathways in the brain that are involved in seizure activity. These would always be considered last resort procedures due to their radical and invasive nature. Now, let's get to CBD. This is, this is where I get really excited. Now, Epidiolex has been out there. This, uh, that's a patented prescription medication. It's been used for decades, and it's made from cannabidiol and is prescribed for Lennox Gastaut syndrome, which is a severe form of infant and childhood epilepsy, and for Dravet syndrome, also known as severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. And that is a very rare and, of course, devastating form of intractable um, epilepsy beginning in infancy, which is very saddening. Let me give you some research findings. Numerous studies in investigating the effects of CBD for both seizures and epilepsy have shown good to great results. Two experts, um, Lineau and Birnbaum, state in their book, CBD, A Patient's Guide to Medical Cannabis, quote, out of all the many uses of CBD, using it for seizure control has shown some of the most spectacular and well-publicized results, end of quote. That gives me a lot of hope. They report that individuals experience a reduction in frequency, intensity, and duration of seizures, or they stop completely, which is miraculous, after using CBD. Here are some other findings okay, that I discovered in the literature. CBD is well-tolerated, and it has few to no side effects. It can be used successfully in children and adults. It can be used in conjunction with anti-seizure medications. CBD can be effective for either focal or generalized seizures, and CBD causes fewer side effects than traditional medicines. Here are my final thoughts. Seizure disorder and epilepsy affect a lot of people in the U.S. and around the world. There are medications and there are lifestyle changes to consider, but CBD has truly shown impressive results. It's effective and safe and has no unpleasant or serious side effects that many prescription medications have. When people experience negative side effects, guess what they do? They stop taking their medications. Their condition gets worse. CBD, I believe and I hope, may have a bright future for people with seizures and epilepsy. More time in research will hopefully confirm this, and the sooner, the better.
I'm Dr. Jim. Keep coming back for more good information on CBD and a whole lot of other topics. Thank you for watching the video. And I'd like to show you my new book, Living Longer and Stronger with CBD. It took me about a year and a half to write as I scanned hundreds of articles in prestigious journals, peer-reviewed medical studies, examining the effects of CBD for various physical conditions, emotional and mental issues, and neurodegenerative conditions. And I condensed all of those findings into one book. I believe that there's something in here for everyone. So, if you're interested, follow the link to the book on Amazon. Thank you so much.